folder like typing you know when you type with one finger and then it was some of the things that I did and I look back to that and I'm like those are actually some of the most special moments ever because something that is so basic something that most people take for Welcome to my YouTube channel. What did I say? Consistency. Week 2, another video coming out. Welcome. As you know, I'm your boy, the Mad Guy T. And today I decided, you know what, let's just discuss my BSc journey. Because a lot of people who watch these videos are doing BSc. And the one thing that stresses people the most is marks. And for me, I'm always thinking to myself, you know what, marks are really yeah, you need them, but they're really not the alpha and omega. I don't want people to stress and not enjoy the course because of the marks. And the main purpose of this video, it's not for people to celebrate me, because you'll watch the video and then you'll see that there's actually nothing really to celebrate, because I was an average student. Most people who do BSc are very, like, they are average students. And then you also need to understand that in life, things happen. You won't always perform at your optimum best life happens, uh, we lose people that we love, we fall sick and all those things do contribute to our marks, they do take a toll on our health so you also need to understand that with all that is, that is happening um, you need to work hard, yes, but also you need to be fair on yourself as a person to understand that you're not always going to get 80s, you're not always going to get 90s, but as long as you're working hard, as long as your heart is in there, I believe that, you know what, if your heart is really into something and it is something that it was meant to happen to you then it will happen last week i had a young gentleman who sent me a dm on twitter and then he said on instagram and he said to me that he's doing grade 12 and for him the biggest thing was that he wanted to repeat grade 11 because he felt like his marks were not good enough in grade 11 and i asked him one question can't you really work hard in grade 12 to get the marks that you need there and then uh, we went back and forth and I realized that this is something that he actually really thought about and I was like, you should talk to your teachers about this and he was like, yeah, I did speak to my teachers about it and then I feel like it's something that I want to do and in the end I was like, okay, just do something that will make you happy if you feel like do, redoing grade 11 is gonna be beneficial for you then go for it by all means but for me, at the back of my mind was that, you know, if there's people who are willing to do that for this degree, it means that they really have heart for it and they really want to do it. So <clears throat> let me take you back on my journey, the whole thing. Maybe if I've done a video like this before when I did uh, how I got into medical school, um, some of the things you will see that they are different with this one because in this one I'm going to discuss some of the marks that I was getting, not some, all of them actually. I will put them up so that you guys can see that the way, yes, that I was not very, very strong in my career and then the way, yes, that I actually really did very well. So let me take you back to the year 2009, actually. Here is a young man who is doing grade 12 and, uh, you know, I'm thinking to myself, next time I'm going to do medicine, everything's going to be so great. And it is one thing that's really pushing me. If there was one year that I was very consistent, I worked very hard, it was that year. I would wake up very early in the morning. Before 6 o'clock I was up, by 7 o'clock I was at school. I came back at 6 p.m. because I was really committed to doing very well. And for me, you need to understand that I was coming from a village school. And in village schools, opportunities are, are not really almost like... Opportunities are very limited, firstly, and secondly, you really need to work hard. And for me, I was fortunate enough that my teachers were actually willing to teach as well. So in that, I feel like they also motivated me. So the 7th of January 2010, our metric results came out. Our year didn't do very well. I think we got like 63% uh, average um, as the matrix of 2009. And, but for me, I was one of the lucky people who actually did very well. I am going to post my marks up there. If I do manage to navigate the app, and you will see that those are some of the marks that I've gotten. I had passed my metric and I had four distinctions. I scored level sevens for English, Africans, Mathematics and Life Orientation. I remember getting home with those results and everyone was so happy for me. And then for me, I was like, yeah, I could have gotten another A for my home language. Why didn't I? But then again, I realized that I took away from a very special moment in which I could have celebrated the marks that I had gotten, which were very good. 
my physics mark was actually not that good as you can see i had gotten a 50 for it and for me it was like a thing of am i gonna get into medicine with this result and at that time i knew that i was not i was not gonna do medicine in 2010 because all my results from universities had came back and then all my applications were in late because when you if you watched my video on how i got into medical school i did say that i applied very late at all varsities so i was going to UFS to do a bsc but at the time i was very happy because for me the fact that i was going to varsity was actually at the top of my mind to be like wow this is like one chance that most people here don't get and here i am getting it so that really pushed me so i get to bloomfontein and yo know, everything was quite different at the t like for me i get there i'm used to studying on a like with a teacher teaching me everything in my home language i did mathematics physics in my home language the english was there but everything was explained in my native language so that really helped me a lot so i get to uh Dunfontein and then that is not the case anymore everything is in english and uh, everything is done differently suddenly now there's no chalkboards anymore there's this projector there's a computer screen and it took a lot of adjustment to it and one of the courses that i was involved for was computer literacy funny enough when you look at my first year results which i'm gonna post here you'll see that for my basic computer skills i actually performed poorer than i did in my advanced computer skills because it was actually quite a tough time because for the first time in my life i was uh confronted with this computer in front of me and i had to learn how to navigate it and it was quite difficult so things that are very basic like uh creating a folder like typing you know when you type with one finger and then it was some of the things that i did and i look back to that and i'm like those are actually some of the most special moments ever because something that is so basic something that most people take for, for granted so much here was i enjoying it the fact that I am using one hand because sometimes I was like, oh, what, oh my god, what if I break this? And yeah, those were some of the challenges that I faced. You go to class, everything was fast paced. And I was like, wow, if they do a chapter in three days and in my school we do it in a month, how am I going to cope with all of this? And wow, the year went first semester. At the end of the semester, at least I had passed all my modules, which was good. Um, I look back at the results. Um, I had only gotten one distinction for mathematics. Luckily for me, math has always been that subject that carried me. So I did that and then second semester came. Now I was more confident in second semester. And even the friends that I had, I had friends who were actually quite thoughtful and they were very supportive. We used to study together and then Overall, even though there were so many people in the class, we enjoyed the course. So second year, second semester came and I believe that I performed much better than I did in first semester. And for me, it was like one of those proudest moments for me. And then... Um, okay, sorry, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so that was basically first semester for me. It was a lot of adjustment that needed to be done, a lot of adapting to new things, the fact that I had to be confronted with a computer for the first time and adjusting to this fast-paced world. But um, at the end of first semester and first year actually, I had passed all my modules, everything was going quite well. And then we were like, okay, cool, let's go to um, second year of BSc. But before then, I did something else, but then again, I'll create another video of that. So, second year of BSc came, and wow, let me just say, second year of every degree seems to be a tough time. I experienced it in medicine here, I experienced it in BSc there. A lot of my friends who are doing engineering also have told me that they have experienced it also. And one thing that I've actually taken note of with second year of all these courses is because when you get to second year, now the real work begins you get to do the work in first semester everything is introduced everything is still oh yeah let's recap on what you did in matric but now you get to second um yeah and then you really have to do the modules so some of the modules that i took in second year of my bsc i did genetics one and two um two genetics modules um, and I also did biochemistry, there were two courses in biochemistry that I did, and I also did physiology. So, yeah, here was I uh, going into this, and now, wow, it really, thinking back, it really gave me a tough time. Uh, there was a lot of uh, partying that also came into play. 
for me for the first time in my life I was this booming kid and I get into second of this course and now suddenly you know what I start going out as well because you know you are young you, you make a lot of friends and then you guys want to experience things which is fine we're not saying it's not good you need to go out in life you need to experience other things you can study all the time so all of that was happening but now also another thing also happened to me that really really changed the way I had I, I went about life and for me that really affected my studies as well um, towards the end of my second year, I then contracted TB. Oh, that was such a tough time for me uh, because, for one, now I was sick. <laughs> and for the longest time, doctors didn't know what was wrong with me. I remember at one point I went to a GP and then he said I had uh, acute bronchitis. Okay, cool. He gave me some antibiotics. I took them and then I was not getting better. I went back and then it was a thing of no, you have chronic bronchitis and then it was that also now give me another set batch of medication I was taking it but looking back and now I'm a medical student and I'm like that does, those looks are actually not the very smartest of people because I had all the classic signs of TB I was sweating loss of appetite I had lost some weight and I was feeling fatigued all the time and I was sweating at night as well and for me I was like now I'm like, that was, he could have screened me for TB, but they didn't do that. And so when all of that was happening, you can imagine now, here is second of BSc, it's hard, and now here am I, sick as well. So you can, have, you can imagine how everything was. My marks took a knock. Um, I had to have some reassessment for two of my courses. I passed one of one, and then the other one I didn't pass. And for me, for the first time in my life, I was confronted with this, like, oh wow, I didn't pass a module, my marks are not looking so good anymore now. And I'm thinking to myself, am I even going to get into medicine? Uh, is this the end? And at that time, I really felt like my faith was tested a lot. And it was very difficult because I was, that here was I, I had this long dream that I had bottled for so long. And then it was as if I'm watching it slip through my fingers. And at the time, my friends, I had two friends who applied to go to Cuba. And they got in to go. And then it was the year that um, over a hundred students from the Free State went to Cuba. And for me, I was like, here's my opportunity. I could have left now, but I couldn't because during the screening test, I was sick. So it was not a thing of, you're going to go there. You're not going to go there. And be sick there and then my family was never gonna allow me to go as well so after going back and forth I then went back to the Northwest um, when I got there at least the doctors they decided to admit me initially they thought I had malaria and then they realized okay, it was not that and they screened me for TB who giving that sputum <laughs> was so difficult I kept on swallowing them but eventually when I did and then the results came back, it was TB, you know, they even did an HIV test, you know, like, at that time, you're like, you know what, whatever that you need to test, test, whether I'm ready or not ready, it's fine. HIV came back, it was negative, the TB results came back, positive for TB, and then I had to be on this TB treatment for six months. Um, wow, well, initially, it was very difficult. You know, we take things for granted, like health, but for me, you know, taking medication every day, for six months, wow. I respect people who are on medication for a very long time. And the fact that I was back home in the Northwest, you know like people usually say things to be like, oh, they would ask you, so what's wrong with you? And then you would be like, oh yeah, no, I've got TB. And they would be like, <laughs> no. There were news going up on that, no, it's actually not TB. This one is lying. He must just tell the truth. He's positive, I'm like, mm hmm. Thinking back now, it's like, you know what, miss, there were people were, you know, people are smart. They do know about co-infection because some people were like, no, you can't have TB without having HIV. I was like, mm -mm. the two are actually not like this. You can have one without the other. So you can imagine on my side, it's all of that that's happening. And then on the other side, I'm having this beast that I have to cope with. But you know what? I just said, you know what? My health was important. I went on to take my medication and then I started with third year of BSc, luckily the module I had not passed was not my major, so I could still finish with the year, so I took out my year three modules, and oh boy, if I need to tell you, like wow, that was the year that I actually 
performed at my optimum best. I don't know if Viva 4 was making me do all that or what, but I took my medication, went with it. My friends were very supportive. They didn't go. The whole thing of when days are dark, friends are few, for me it doesn't apply because my friends were really supportive. And we really decided to go through together and we were all excited to think that we are in third year, we made it this far. And I then had like eight modules that I was doing at the time. Four courses of genetics, two per semester, and then four courses of human molecular biology, two per semester. And wow, that year, even the modules that I didn't get my highest mark for, I was in the top 10 for that. I'm going to post here, our lecturer used to put our top 10 results on Facebook. Wow, looking back, I was like, wow, sis, sis, this was so extra actually. But yeah, that actually motivated us. And <clears throat> I did very well. At the end of that year, I had five distinctions out of the eight modules I was doing and finally I was like what we actually gonna do this and then in that year you know um for me you'll see even with the marks that I'm gonna post here if I do manage to get the app to work um that year I had a lot of faith my faith was coming back because I felt like I was being tested a lot and for me I was like you know what I'm just gonna give it my all and then I will take it from there I did well Everything was going good. Five out of eight distinctions. Still applied for medical schools. The answers were no, no, no everywhere. And I was like, okay, cool, it's fine. We'll just do an honors degree. And oh boy. You know when people say honors is tough and then you know, we like they are playing? Actually, honors is really tough because now you are expected to do things. You are an adult now. I remember one of our lectures was like, you adults now, you need to be able to take initiative and do things by yourself. And in that year, I learned that actually, to take initiative, to do things, to do research. And I fell in love with, with research at that time. And for me, I really enjoyed it. I did very well, I think. So it's not actually very well, but uh, for a post-grad degree, I believe that my results were quite good. My friends and I also very much enjoyed that. And it was at the end of BSc actually when we finished it and we looked back and it was like, you know, when you connect the dots, looking backwards, everything had to happen the way it did. Because for me, if all the things that happened to me in second year didn't happen, do you think I could have been as consistent and as hardworking as I was in third year? I feel like uh, falling off the bandwagon in second year really gave me a different perspective, really had me sitting down and questioning myself to say, if you really want this, how much are you willing to put in? So it was a thing of, if I'm willing to work very hard to achieve this, then God will notice every sacrifice that I make. And then if God can trust you with a little, He will actually then give you more because He will know that you'll be able to handle it. And let me just say, after an honors degree, I applied to medical schools now, not with my master's results, with my honors results. And let me tell you, it was, you know, you know when it was, when it's a year for you to get your yeses, the yeses that were coming from everywhere. UP um, also gave me my first yes. I'm going to find that acceptance letter and I'm going to post it as well in this video. And then I'm also going to find the acceptance letter from Stellenbosch and upload it here as well. And in all of that, one thing that I want you to take away from this video is that Tough times don't last, tough people do last and if you really want something in life, you really need to work hard to achieve it and if you are willing to make sacrifices for it, then it will definitely come to you. The one thing that that young gentleman gave me, for me it is actually quite phenomenal, it was something that I actually quite needed in life for me to be like, am I really taking medicine for granted? If there's so many people inboxing me on a daily basis saying they want to do it, if there's somebody who's going to say to me that I am willing to repeat grade 11 for this, if I've got people from as far as Namibia saying to me, I'm doing a Bachelor of Nursing in Namibia, do you think in South when I apply in South Africa, they're going to take me? So it is all those things that really make me appreciate this even more. So if you are sitting there and you really know that this is what, what you want, what I'm going to say to you is that work hard, keep your head high, know that in life things happen. If you don't pass a test here, you don't pass a test there, know that it's okay. You will pick up, you will work harder. 
And then when you apply to medical schools, such things are taken into consideration. Things happen. Um, you're not going to lose a parent today and then tomorrow you're writing a test and they won't expect you to ace that test. No. When you apply, when you get called in an interview, they will ask you, so why did you have this result in this year? And you'll get a chance to explain yourself. Maybe you won't get a chance to explain yourself everywhere, but one person will ask you why and you will give them that answer. But before I end this video, I just want to tell you guys that UFS, Stellenbosch, University of Pretoria have all opened their applications for the year 2021. So if you want to apply, if you, st if you have doubts and all, just apply. You can always change your mind at a later stage. Don't look at your marks and say they're not going to take me. Just send it anyway. What's the worst that can happen? They can say no. And if they say no, you will know that okay. Uh, maybe I went wrong here and there and you can always follow up again and apply in the next time So this is where we're gonna leave it. I hope this video was helpful I know there was a lot of rambling. I went off a tangent here and there But if you enjoyed this video, please give it a massive thumbs up. Do comment share it with other people Let's spread this positivity throughout and don't forget to subscribe also until we meet each other again in the next video which is gonna probably be not this serious fun light headedness i'm gonna invite other people until then be good <laughs>